serving God. Lecture. Every child, after being born, begins inevitably to learn egoism. This happens because children can do nothing by themselves. Everything is done for them by others. This is inevitable. But then children grow, and at this stage, the correct education must include weaning them of the egocentric dominance and teaching them caring about others. One can observe funny examples in behaviour of animals. For example, grown-up baby crows. Baby crows. Their bodies are already of the size of the parents. Demand again and again food from their parents. The tired parents are desperate. We don't have any more food. What can we do? We flew all over the neighborhood. We are hungry ourselves. You should seek food yourselves. You have grown up. Finally, the parents manage to find some food. They bring it and put in front of the children. And what do the children do? Eat it? No. They cry even louder, demanding that the parents take the food from the ground and put it into their mouths. Another case: people tamed a baby crow. He became large, the size of an adult crow. These people cautiously put pieces of bread into his mouth. He has a large beak and can bite painfully. Sometimes the pieces of food fall out of his beak. The baby crow, instead of taking them from the ground, demands in his crow language, "You have put it bad. Do I have to bow to it?" But as time goes by. His needs will make him seek food himself and bow to it. Then he will have his own children, and these children will become that school where he will learn to care about others, the school of altruism. In case of people, it happens in a similar manner, but the correct or wrong education plays here a more important role. So often, one can observe total egocentrism in adult people, even in those who are believers. Yet the true love that God wants to see in us is the opposite of wanting something for oneself. Love is not one's passion wanting. True love, which alone is accepted by God, implies making good to others. Helping others in everything good, sacrificing oneself for others' sakes. Totally egocentric people misunderstand it so much that even in bright altruistic deeds of others, they try to see only selfishness, always seeking a reason for irritated condemnation, hatred. Such people cannot understand God, and cannot approach Him. How do people understand service to God? Some think that to serve God means simply to belong to the clergy of some religious confession. Others think deeper and seek to serve by participating in common prayers and meditations, and some even dance and sing in honor of God. But God wants us to do much more. In particular, Jesus Christ and other divine teachers edify us that one has to view the service to God as service to all, to help all in everything good, and one has to help not for the sake of one's own profit, but for the sake of those whom one helps. They can be people, animals, or plants. Also, one has to see behind all of them God's interest in this. In order to be able to understand this and understand also how to discriminate between good deeds and those just seeming to be good, one has to try to look at situations from the point of view of the global strategic plan of the Creator, namely 
we have to understand the essence of the universal evolutionary process and find our place in it. And then we will be able not only to try practicing the precepts of God, but also to see their important role in the global strategy of the Creator. This will bring us to a deeper understanding of our own tasks and the ways of helping others better. Then we will gradually become active participants of the evolution of the universal consciousness, active assistance to the Creator. Active participation in the evolutionary process has to be regarded as consisting of two main parts a. spiritual self development, b. help to others. In this process, as the Apostle Paul taught, we should strive to serve with our highest abilities, as well as to seek to acquire even higher skills. The essence of the Creator's plan of creating material worlds, including this small islet of matter in the universe, our planet, is to transform less perfect constituents of the Absolute into more perfect. In this process, the individual consciousnesses who have achieved the full perfection, enrich the Creator with themselves. So both personal self-development and help to other evolving souls in their evolution are good from God's point of view. In particular, if we develop ourselves through meditative work, the quality of our service improves. We become closer to the Creator by the quality of the consciousness and begin to see the world better. We approach his capabilities of seeing and understanding. We also develop through our activity of helping others, increasing our knowledge about how to help. This knowledge will be useful even after disembodiment. Let us feel, or at least imagine, that there is only one universal macroorganism, the Absolute. Inside the Absolute, the process of its development, the universal evolution, goes on. Let us feel unity, interrelation of everything in him as a whole. Let us feel our inseparability from it, from the process of its development. Let us feel the joy of this awareness, and now, with this new understanding, let us direct our efforts to assisting the transformation of all capable lumps of consciousness into the consciousness of the Creator. We all are one in the organism of the Absolute. This is the essence of the principle suggested by Jesus Christ. Love your neighbour as yourself, and even more than yourself. This principle concerns the aspect of love called care. Its highest manifestation is self-sacrifice for the good of others. Jesus Christ demonstrated such a sacrifice. He gave us an example of care by the exploit of his life and death on the earth. Let us become like him in this respect. Quite a few people long for cognition of the Absolute and seek the Creator. Others, schooled by atheism and perverted religious movements, or those perverted on their own choice, are well satisfied with partaking of the forbidden, by God, fruits from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Such people risk going to hell, because earthly attachments provoke coarse emotions, anxiety, fear, sorrow, despair, jealousy, envy, irritation, hatred, anger, and so on. And those who habituate themselves to such emotional states actually accustom themselves to living in hell and go there after disembodiment. The fruits of the kingdom of heaven are gained by few who find peace of the soul outside of earthly passions and develop selfless love to such an extent that it enables them to fall in love with the Creator 
and thus become attracted to him. And he meets such people with his highest love. But the others love themselves, call their cravings love, demand more and more love for themselves from others, cherishing thus their egocentrism, and hate other people because they poorly please me, and, on the whole, do not do what I want them to do. All beings, both embodied and non-embodied, differ by the age of the soul. It is one of the main features of every person in particular. Other important features are such qualitative characteristics as the level of intellectual development, ethical maturity, coarseness or subtlety of the consciousness. The quantitative valuation is based on the size of the soul. The evolution of a soul goes in a series of many Earth's incarnations, and one cannot expect a high spiritual potential from soul that is incarnated in the human body for the first time. It comes to this soul later, provided that its development is auspicious. From this, one can understand that not all embodied people, even if they have obtained a certain higher spiritual knowledge, can reach the abode of the Creator in their current incarnation, no matter how hard they try. Moreover, when two young souls get involved in meditative work, which is too serious for them, at a certain moment they lose understanding and start to play religion, like children play their childish games. It may bring to a development of inadequate perception of oneself, just like in the case of boys who play war. Imagine themselves colonels and generals. In the worst case, it may cause mental disorders. The latter is often the case in the religious organisations, where instead of God and love, frightening mystical factors, devils, demons, sorcerers, vampires and so on, are brought in the focus. This is why religious leaders must use esoteric techniques and information very carefully, taking into account their possible harmful effects on those people who are intellectually and ethically immature. And everyone who seeks spiritual progress should evaluate their own capabilities and not climb those steps of the stairway of spiritual development where it will be hard for them to stand. By the way, it is not bad at all if you have realised that you are a psychogenetically young soul. On the contrary, it means that you have not grown in yourself all these vices that otherwise you would have to get rid of for a long time. A young soul is the one that has the entire joyful spiritual path ahead. Just do not waste time in vain. I have lived my Earth's life very intensively, and when I was making the way to the Creator for me and for my friends, many people got involved into the stream created by me at different stages. At the beginning, it always looked wonderful, but later, starting from a certain stage of the work, many of them would lose understanding of the work. They would get drawn backwards or to entertainments. And since I was not interested in playing games, discontent with me, protest, and even hostility towards me would arise. It took me quite some time to come to understand that one should not give the highest knowledge and methods to anyone asking for them. And this understanding could not come until I accumulated tremendous experience of providing spiritual help to people. Sometimes this experience was very dramatic for me. Now, I share this experience with you, as I do in my other books, to help you avoid making such errors. But let these warnings scare no one away from the spiritual quest. One should just choose for oneself the tasks that one is equal to. 
One of the really attainable goals for anyone is to ensure oneself of going to paradise after the end of their current incarnation and to predetermine an excellent destiny for the future. It is very simple to achieve. One has just to know how, and we have discussed this question a lot, and take into account that this goal can be attained only through one's own spiritual efforts and not through participation in rituals, prayers of saints, or anyone's prayers altogether. Also, let us not confuse prayer with meditation. Sometimes these terms are used in place of each other. The main meaning of these words is the following. Prayer is a request to God, which sometimes degrades into begging earthly welfare from God. But the term meditation denotes work of the consciousness aimed at cognition of God, which can ensure success on this path if one is ethically and intellectually mature. Sattva of Spring Introduction to Film Peace to you, friends. Now we are going to saturate you with subtle beauty. What for? The point is that this is one of the most important methods of spiritual work. From the evolutionary standpoint, everyone starts their personal history in paradise. It will be more clear if you study the scheme for studying the structure of the Absolute. Souls get formed and start developing in paradise. They are not human souls yet. They are germs of human souls that go through the initial stages of their evolution in vegetal and then in animal bodies. But having reached, after many such incarnations, the possibility to become humans, we, for some reason, begin to develop attachments to material objects and grow egocentrism in ourselves. It gets manifested as arrogance, contemptuous attitude towards other living beings, and so on. Since it is impossible to satisfy completely the vicious desires of possessing the objects of our longing, it provokes in us persistent negative emotions and results in formation of such qualities as irritation, angriness, jealousy, touchiness, and so on. In this way, most of people lose paradise. And souls living in paradise are those who accustom themselves to pure, subtle, loving, tender states of consciousness. And hell is the destiny of coarse people, who got used to living during their life in the physical body in coarse emotional states. The paradisiacal states are called sometimes satvic, the hellish states tamasic, and the intermediate rajasic. So, to come back to paradise, once we come to know about these laws, we have to master psychical self-regulation with the purpose of rooting out all coarse states in ourselves and cultivating subtle states by all means. More details about the most efficient methods of psychical self-regulation can be found in our books. And now, one of the most important methods of psychical self-regulation, attunement to the beautiful. We find the beautiful, first of all, in living nature. Moreover, it is possible to cognize God in the aspect of the Creator only from Sattva, from the paradisiacal state of the soul. The Creator is the most subtle part of the universal consciousness, and Sattva is the closest to the divinity state of the soul. God is really cognizable for people who follow this knowledge, and he is indeed incognizable for those existing in the Gunas Tamas and Rajas. And another very important point, God is love, and one can approach him 
only through cultivating in oneself the emotions of love, first for the sattvic beings and phenomena, and then for him, for God. So let us begin immersing into sattva by attuning to it, merging with it, becoming it. <laughs> 